January 24, 1993, 30 miles outside of Bozeman, Montana, a man is trying to get to town on foot. The falling snow chilled the man's bones as he walked down the road. Each shaky step he made was a stumble and stride, following the set of footprints imprinted in the ice from the last man to make the trek. He couldn't remember where he was, how he got there, nor how long he had been walking. All he knew was that he had to keep walking. Keep walking until he reaches town. As he hiked across the vast Montana plains, he tried to remember what he was doing, why he was there, even who he was. Okay, name, Isaac. Isaac Hayes. My parents always loved soul music. Why well, so, well, they name you Isaac Hayes? I'm 28 years old, I write the quick stop in. I, I don't know where. What else do I know? Behind him, Isaac heard the hum of a car in the distance. The steady tempo eased his nerves. But then the car came a little closer, a little faster, accelerating toward him. Through the blinding light, Isaac could almost make out what it was. A silver Camry. Not too old, but old enough to be considered as such. Probably a vintage of ten years. Isaac kept on walking. Then the Camry pulled over in front of Isaac. Out stepped a thin woman, around Isaac's age, who looked to be a business person of some sort. She was dressed in black slacks, the bottoms of her pants slightly dusty. The smoke from her cigarette created an air of mystery about her, but that was not the most intriguing thing. In her right hand was a briefcase of dark brown leather with elegant gold stitching, and the thread formed intricate patterns like those in a French palace, its curves and curls flowing throughout the hide. Hey, hey you, you, said the woman. Isaac looked around the Montana tundra that surrounded him. There wasn't another soul for miles. I guess she means me, he thought. Do you, you want to help a girl, a girl out? I have, I have to, to deliver, deliver this briefcase to a guy in Bozeman. Thousand dollars, said the woman. A thousand dollars? You could buy me a few coats with that. The offer seemed tempting, but he had to make sure he knew who he was dealing with. Do I know you? asked Isaac. That's, That's not, not important. important. What's in the briefcase? Also, also not, not important. important. Well, what's your name? You, you ask, ask too many, many questions. questions. Just, Just get, get in the, the car, car if you want, want to help. help. Screw it. Isaac got in the car, and they drove into Bozeman. After a half hour in the city, the one brought Isaac to the ghetto of Bozeman. However, it was not so much a ghetto as it was a land of shoddy apartments and barren surface lots. They stopped in front of a small bar. Bar, the sign said in capital letters. It seemed quaint. The one parked the car, got out, and escorted Isaac, herself, and the briefcase into the bar. First, first things, things first, first, explained the woman. Pick, pick your, your poison. poison. Isaac thought that if this was some sort of secret mission, this would be a terrible plan of action. However, the woman seemed to know what she was doing so he went along with it. She was wrong. A fight soon broke out, and the woman was dragged into a back room, leaving the briefcase battered and whiskey-stained on the tile. This gave Isaac an opportunity. I have to know. Isaac swiped the mystery case and took it into a back room. In the pitch dark, he stumbled into a chair and shoved it under the doorknob. He threw on the light and tore open the briefcase, its contents, printer paper, a clipboard, a burlap sack, and a cassette marked one twenty-two ninety-three. In a hurry, Isaac found a Walkman and listened to the tape. It played that which he could not understand. On the tape, the voice was him, a warning from himself. To so those who are hearing, hearing this, please, please help me. me. My name is Isaac, Isaac Hayes. Hayes. I've been forced, been forced to, help to help a woman in a suit, suit in a robbery, in a robbery and, and I don't think I'll make I, I don't think I'll live when it's over. My number, my number is 323 Audio tape Isaac was then knocked unconscious. There was a slam, then a thud, and Isaac felt a forceful blow to the back of his skull, knocking him to the ground. Before he went out, he saw a pair of black suede shoes and the dirty hems of a girl's black suit pants standing over him. Isaac awoke with a throbbing pain in his head, a steady rhythm of blood coursing through his skull. He was near blinded by the bright sun. Isaac looked around. His surroundings, trees, snow, sun, and a sign. Bozeman, 20 miles, it said. He didn't know how he got there, nor why he was there. The past few hours seemed like a faint blur. He figured the best way back to town was to follow the two sets of footprints in the snow. 
The wet snow weighed down on his bones, dragging him down to the ground. With each step, he felt a sharp pain in his head. Up in front of him, a car pulled over, a silver Camry. A vaguely familiar woman stepped out of the car. She was dressed in a business suit, the bottoms of her pants slightly dusty, with a slight tear in her right sleeve. Hey, hey Isaac, Isaac, can, can you, help you help me out? out? The woman said. How do you know my name? That's, That's not important. important. Help me deliver, deliver this briefcase? Thousand dollars. The offer seemed tempting. Okay.